Hello there, cardboard tubes. These are what paper towels come on, at least here in the US. I don't know uh, across the pond or up north or in, or in uh, Antarctica. I don't know what paper towels come on, but here in the US, I know for sure, paper towels come on these cardboard rolls. They are fantastic. And I remember as a child, if I combine these with a large amount of duct tape, then they become fortresses or swords or whatever my heart would desire. But what if I wanted to do something that was practical? What if, what if I wanted to build myself a spool holder using paper towel cardboard tubes? I think we've got ourselves a project here. I'm Joel, this is 3D Printing Nerd. Well, here we go, here we go. This is, this is fun, right? This is a fun project. It's, it's somewhat practical, of course, but it's a lot of fun because we're gonna use something that powered many of our childhoods, the ever popular cardboard tube sword. Of course, from wrapping paper, you get better cardboard tube swords, which is true. And you could build something for your spools out of those. It's entirely possible, but we are gonna use these, these. In order to do this, you should probably save up for a little while like I had, because I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. 13, oops, <laughs> 13 cardboard uh, spools, cardboard tubes, paper towel cardboard tubes. Whoa, -ha -ha -ha. that was a Sesame Street count laugh. Are you sure? I, and just in case. I'm not sure if Sean put up the appropriate graphic, but I'm sure he did. Uh, uh, uh. There we go. The idea here is to utilize these cardboard tubes and to create something that could hold a spool. Maybe create something that could hold two spools. Maybe something that could hold one five kilogram spool. I guess we'll see. We'll test it at the end. But now let's think. So in engineering, the most uh, efficient use of materials, I believe comes in the shape of a triangle, right? Triangles, 180 degrees, right? Three 60 degree connectors, uh, equilateral triangles where the sides are all the same length. And then that's supposed to be strong, right? That's why struts and bridges and stuff are triangles. So if we had, if we had a triangle here, and then we had another triangle right here. And then we had the tube going between the two triangles. Then we could, we could essentially put it right there. And I believe that we would even be tall enough to hold the giant spool. So what we need to design are some connectors or some ends. And to do that, we go to Fusion 360. Look at this, look at this. This is what the model looks like. But if I remove that and I have all the sketches showing, you can see that I learned a lot. <laughs> I learned a lot in this build. So what I'm gonna do is recreate this in what I believe to be the fastest way possible. I don't think that this is going to be uh, the best way necessarily. It's just my way of doing it. And if you have a better way of doing it, feel free to let me know in the comments. So we're gonna start brand new going to create a sketch and I'm going to draw on this plane, the up and down plane. There we go. So first what I'm going to do is hit C and bring it out. And that circle is going to be 50 millimeters in diameter. I'm going to hit C and bring out a second one from the center. That's going to be 44 millimeters in diameter. Easy peasy, right? The cardboard tubes themselves, at 44 millimeters seem to measure out just good. And at 50 millimeters, it means that it's got a nice, so, uh, strong, solid outer core. I'm gonna hit L for line. And from center, I'm gonna go out here. I'm gonna make sure the degrees is 60. It's gonna be 60 degrees. And the length is going to be 95 millimeters. You with me so far? I hope so. I'm gonna hit L for line. I'm gonna bring it out this way. So it's going to be 95 millimeters again, and this time it's gonna be another 60 added to the previous 60, so it'll be 120 degrees. This way it's 60 degrees on the triangle because the triangle is three corners of 60 degrees. You all know that, of course. We're really close. It's, 
it's phenomenal how close we are. I'm gonna hit L for line, and out here, I'm gonna go out. I'm gonna go out 25 millimeters, and it's going to be at 30 degrees, whatever it lists. You just wanna make sure that what we have here is a right angle, is a right angle. So this to this should be a right angle. And if we do it again, I'll just, here we go, L for line. We bring it out, see how it has the right angle marker right there, that little blue, that little blue line right there. So it's again, 25 millimeters, 30 degrees, totally fine. I'm gonna hit L, I'm gonna go over to this one and I'm gonna bring it out again. Make sure it's a right angle. It's going to be 25 millimeters and the degrees at least 150, which is fine. You just wanna make sure that that's a right angle. From the end of this 25, you wanna bring it down here. Wait, let's do this first, uh, down here. I'm gonna go here and I'm gonna go across. It's just a line. I just need it to be a straight line. You can use these grid points to, to line it up. That's the way you do it. L from this point down to this line and you want it to be 120 degrees. I don't care how long it is. Just make sure it says 120 degrees there. Hit enter. I'm gonna hit L. I'm gonna go from this side and I'm gonna bring it down and you wanna make sure it says 60 degrees. I don't care about how long it is, but 60 degrees and you do want it to touch that line that we just made down here so right here and right here we're so close to being done it's it's amazing go up to construct and plane at angle well here before we continue let's see so construct plane at angle creates a construction plane through an edge an axis or line at a specific angle which is exactly what we want so right here that line we made click that and you can see it's at a right angle. It's essentially, well, it's zero degrees. And so hit okay. You're gonna do the same thing over here. I'm gonna construct a plane at an angle. I'm gonna pick this line. I'm gonna confirm that it's at zero degrees or at that right angle. And I'm gonna hit enter. We have all that we need now to create this. So select this part, hold down shift, select this part, this, and this. I'm gonna hit E for extrude and it's gonna be 25 millimeters, but instead of direction one side, I'm gonna go direction symmetric, and I'm gonna hit okay for a new body. There it is. I'm gonna go back over here. I'm gonna turn my sketch back on just because I kind of want it on. Now what we can do is go to this plane, click on the plane itself and hit C, and then I'm going to put the circle right, right there, right where that line meets up. Perfect, I'm gonna bring it out 50. A little zoomed in there, aren't I? <laughs> Which is fine. So then C, I'm gonna go to that center point there and I'm gonna do 44 millimeters. Easy enough. I'm gonna stop that sketch. Gonna go over to this plane, click on it, hit C. And I know that right there, you can kind of see right there, that's where that line came up originally. And I'm gonna make that 50 millimeters. I'm gonna hit C bring one out and I'm gonna go 44 millimeters. Bam, there we go, there we go. Hit over stop sketch right over here and then zoom in. Click this and hit E for extrude. You're gonna bring this down 95, there we go. You essentially want to bring this down to where it's it intersects this part so that it's not on the, the continuation back up here. So it's, it's 95. 95 millimeters and change from cut to join. You're gonna do the same thing on the other side. So this and hit E, bring it down minus 95. And then over here from cut to join and hit okay. Cool. These planes that we have, we need to bring those back up. Or I'm sorry, not the planes. We can do that, but the two sketches that we made on the planes. So this sketch right here, I wanna click the center and I wanna hit E for extrude. And what I'm gonna do is extrude it three millimeters, but instead of a profile plane, I'm gonna do an offset plane and I'm gonna do minus 40. So what this does is it extrudes three millimeters, but it sends it down 40 millimeters into this tube. I'm gonna use join and I'm gonna hit okay. So if the cardboard tube itself is going in this direction, it has a flat surface to stop against. We do need to do the same thing to this side. So I do have the sketch enabled and I can click, I can hit E, and I'm gonna go three, and then I'm gonna change, oops, I'm gonna change uh, profile plane to offset and I'm gonna go again, minus 40, four zero. Join is already selected, so I'm gonna hit okay. 
one more operation that we need. Here we go. Now we need to get rid of this intersection right here. So I can click here because I know my sketch is enabled, but I need to click in here, but the bodies are in the way. So if I hold down shift and I hold down my left mouse button, I can scroll through and find the different pieces of my CAD surface that I need to pick from. And it looks like it's that right there. I'm gonna hit E and I'm gonna go, let's say 50, what the heck? And I'm gonna go symmetric and it's gonna be a cut and I'm gonna hit okay. And there we go. Let's turn off these sketches. And here's our piece. That's it. That is it right there. Oh yeah, I did it. Okay, well let's go back to the original. Let's turn on the body, turn off the sketches. I think we did a good job. I mean, of course, you could add some fillets on the angles because that's gonna be proper or the easy way to do things. But from there, you just go up to this unsaved document, oops, and uh, you hit the right mouse button and you go save as an STL. And then you make sure it looks like this and then you hit okay and you can name it. You can name it a file name. Of course, you can tell that I had all of my, my uh, prototypes right here. So I've already saved it out. But now that we have the model, it's time to print it. While this print is printing though, let's talk about the Matter Hackers Build Series PLA. It's what I used for a lot of this project. It's what I used for the OpenRCF1 project where I did a really big car. It's really good material and I've printed with a lot of it, as you can see. In fact, I've printed with a lot of it and they've been successful prints. It's a good material. It's a good material at a good price. And if you go to matterhackers.com or to 3d.pn forward slash matterhackers, you can get some to your house delivered and uh, it'll be quick because shipping is free and fast. That's Matter Hackers Build Series PLA. Go get yourself some and make something awesome today. Before I show you the print that worked, let's take a look at some of the prototypes and the prints that didn't work. First, what I did is I tried this. This piece, uh, similar to the correct piece, and it wasn't sized properly here, here, or here. Before I used 44 millimeters, I used 43.35 because that's what I had measured one at, but the clearance or the tolerance or whatever the right word is, wasn't appropriate. Plus that little insert that the cardboard tube is supposed to fit in against uh, was, wasn't down far enough. So that didn't work. That didn't stop me from printing more than one. And uh, I just stopped the print because when this was printing, I figured, well, there was no need to let it go on. I wanted to save as much of that proto pasta candy apple red from Chuck Hellebuck. Chuck's a good dude as well. Chuck Hellebuck, Chuck Hellebuck's electronic products or Chep or Chep Club or whatever that, that fantastically awesome dude is going by. Good channel. If you don't know Chuck, you should know Chuck. Then I tried this piece, this piece right here almost looks like a, an engine part or something like that. Cause the idea was I wanted it to print upright. These were printing like this. And that meant that support had to be on the insides. There wasn't support in the middle ring, but I wanted it to print like this. I thought it would be better. So when I did that, I added this part at the bottom, nice and flat, because if it printed like this, it would need to add support on either side. This meant that it didn't need that support on the side. However, because I want them to essentially go like this, having this piece here meant that the tube would be above the ground too much and there would be pressure on the tube in this direction, which could cause it to fail. So while they do look pretty cool, they are just prototypes. And prototypes, well, they're cool. They show a progress, right? They give you history of a project, but the final project is done with final parts. Rawr! Here they are. These parts right here are the, the final pieces and they printed incredibly well. The Matter Hackers Build Series PLA worked fantastic. The Prusa i3 Mark III machines and the CME CNC Artemis are responsible for producing these prints. Each of the orifices are 44 millimeters, which means that a cardboard tube could easily fit here. It could easily fit here and it could easily fit right here. So the final piece fits the tubes just fine. What I also wanted to do, I didn't want to have different pieces. I wanted them all to be the same because that way you just have one model and one model is all you need. Let's put it together. We're going to start with this piece right here. And uh, let's see, 
we'll pair them up like that. So this light green and the dark green, we'll put it together just like that. I'll move these out of the way because I want to get you a nice clear view. Yeah. This piece is going to go right here. It's a little tricky up top. Uh, you can't just put it in like that. You have to kind of go at an angle. <laughs> There's one triangle and uh, it's plenty strong. I mean, obviously just one triangle is going to hold that just fine. But what if we put them all on there? <laughs> I don't know if I can do this. Let's see. It's not going to stay. <laughs> tell you what, I'm going to go ahead and trust that I think it's going to be strong enough because I can put some pressure on it and these do slide a little bit, but that's okay. Cause we're going to have two efficient triangles. Even when a little, uh, an end here gets all kind of crunchy because this is holding it essentially evenly around the entirety of the, cir the circumference of the hole, then it, it, it keeps its strength. Here we go. There's our second one. So knowing this, what we need to do is put a spool between it. So here's what I'm thinking because I do have plenty of tubes. What if, what if I sturdied it on either side? Just, just for the sake of, of being cool, right? We can, we can do that. Okay. Okay. Right. So to hold the spool, you need to put it through, put the spool here and then thread that through to the other side. Nothing. Look at that. It's interesting because the cardboard of the tube itself provides a little bit of resistance, a little bit of drag. So it's not free spinning as if it was on bearings, but I think that drag, that little bit of drag, just that tiny little bit, I think that works in its towards its advantage. This is a full spool. Let's see. So in order to, to add spools, uh, it's not the easiest thing, but let's see. Let's just give it a go. Right. So this is what we do. We try things. I predict it's going to work. Okay, look at that. Two spools. Easy peasy. I know what you're asking yourself, but Joel, the giant spool, is that even going to fit? Is it going to hold it? I don't know. Let's find out. For that one, what I want to do is tilt it to the side and then I will, I will remove this just like that. And so that way what I can do is take these off and I can put this on and I put this on like this. And there we go. This is a cardboard tube spool holder holding a big giant roll of high five blue. God, keep your spools tidy, Joel. Well, there we go. That's kind of fun. I know what you're asking. I know where this is going. How much weight can it hold? I've got spare tubes. Let's find out. So what I will do is just have this piece right here. here we'll do it. We'll do it like that. Green on top. I had to put some really serious pressure on that, but look where it failed. It failed right there. So if for some reason you do have that, you get another cardboard tube, <laughs> you put it back together. Ta-da! Well, this is it. Um, this was, this is my design and I do like it. I think that there could be some changes. I think keeping it all one piece, I think is good though. I think what might help is if, the top piece itself is just a semicircle because then what you could do is have a spool like this and then you, you essentially load it in right there. You would load it in and load it right out. I think having two individual pieces, I think that might be okay. Oh, you know, if I took out that half circle, it would still sit. Maybe that's something I do in the future or maybe that's something you do. I'll tell you what, I'll put a link to the model and you can have your way with it. This time, I'm gonna put it on Thingiverse. I would love to see your remixes. I would love to see your applications. And if you have ideas for your versions of cool stuff you can make using 3D printing that involve these cardboard tubes, I would love to see it. Again, tag me on the Twitters. I'm at Joel Telling. And uh, I hope you have yourself a pretty rad day. <laughs> A big thanks for watching. And if you made it this far, of course, you're awesome. Subscribe if you're not and ring that bell so you never miss cool stuff that gets uploaded to the channel. Don't forget to hug each other more because I love you guys. As always, high five.